everyone. Welcome to episode two of C Sharp and .NET development and VS Code for beginners. In episode one, we covered some definitions talking about VS Code or Visual Studio Code and why you should use it, as well as the C Sharp Dev Kit extension, which is the extension that will enable us to be able to not just write C Sharp code in VS Code, but write it effectively and productively. And in this episode, we are going to actually go ahead and install both VS Code and C Sharp Dev Kit, and I'm going to walk you through it. The good news is I'm not going to be throwing you a bajillion steps of things that you got to do. You don't have to do any backflips here, because when it comes to installing Visual Studio Code, all you got to do is hit this big old blue button that says Download for Insert whatever OS you are currently working on. So I'm using Windows, but if you're on a Mac, if you're on a Linux, uh, on, a Linux on a Linux machine, then it, the button will probably change to that. And so I've got the download going, so let's go ahead and open up the EXE. And you're going to go through a basic setup wizard, go through the usual options. Here's an interesting one. You can have the option to create a desktop option, which I like. You can also choose to have the open with code action added to your context menus, which I like as well. And then we're going to hit install. So while that is installing, I want to give a shout out specifically to some other options that you have when it comes to installing. Uh, you'll notice that in my case, I was automatically redirected to the documentation, which I will talk about in a second. But if we go back to the main home page of Visual Studio Code, you have more options other than the big blue button here. <laughs> so if you want more control over what's happening, you again have access to Mac, Windows 64, and Linux 64. Um, builds as well as the Insiders build, which sounds super VIP, but really this is a build of VS Code that anyone is able to use. It's completely free, and it's like a preview version of Visual Studio Code. So it might have some additional features and improvements that haven't made their way into the stable build yet. So if you like to try out new things and share your and share your feedback before anybody else is using them, really, <laughs> then go check out the Insiders. And from there, you can also check out other downloads if you want. So you have a lot of free range over what is getting installed on your computer. Now, going back to the documentation, the documentation is great in Visual Studio Code. It has a lot of different topics to explore, including just general getting started with VS Code stuff, some of which we're going to talk about in this video series. And also, what's cool about Visual Studio Code docs is that there are language-specific documentation topics. So the one we're specifically honing in on is going to be the C Sharp one. And there's all kinds of topics, a lot of which we're going to explore here, uh, such as getting started, refactorings, IntelliCode, package management. So highly encourage you to check out the documentation, which also has a lot of GIFs. I love GIFs personally. Pictures are worth a thousand words. Videos even better. So um, definitely check that out if you want to start learning up on all the cool things that both C Sharp and VS Code have to offer. And let's do a status update on VS Code. Looks like we're good to go here, so I'm going to go ahead and launch it. And there we are. See how easy that was to set up VS Code? Unfortunately, I didn't have enough time to go have a coffee break, but you know, if you can get your coffee quickly in the span of five-ish minutes, then <laughs> not even that, then I, I guess you can have some coffee. But now that we've opened up VS Code for the first time, what's nice is that you can have the option to have VS Code walk you through everything you need to know about getting started with VS Code in the form of this walkthrough. So when you're first opening up VS Code, you're, in gre you're greeted with this menu, and you're greeted with one of the most pressing questions of it for any developer in this day and age, which is what theme <laughs> you should go with for your ideal development environment. I'm going to stick with the dark theme, but VS Code and the extension community is huge and has tons of different themes you can choose from. So highly encourage you to play around until you find the color palette that suits you best. And I'm going to quickly go through some of these other ones, but you also have access to uh, just how to learn some basic fundamentals, learning about some of the things that are built in with VS Code, such as the terminal, extensibility, how to tune your settings. Uh, which we'll also talk about in a sec. And yeah, so you have a lot of different options. If you want to return to those walkthroughs, then you can do that. Something that I also want to highlight 
about VS Code specifically um, that I accidentally skipped <laughs> in this walkthrough is the ability to sync your settings, which you can do by heading over to the settings menu, which I will talk about, talk about in a sec. But that's a really nice option if maybe you have VS Code installed somewhere else. Maybe it's another machine. And if you're installing VS Code again and you want to make sure the settings that you set in the former location make their way over to the latter, then you can do that. So that saves you the trouble of having to start from scratch all over again. And now that we've set up VS Code, let's go check out some C Sharp Dev Kit stuff. So we're going to make our way over to the Extensions pane, which is on the left side here by default anyway. And here you have basically a built-in extensions marketplace. This is a space that you can also take a look at um, in your web browser if you want. But why do that when you can easily search and browse extensions directly within VS Code? So you don't have to have multiple windows open if you don't want. And you can also install them directly from here too. So in our case, let's look for the C Sharp stuff. And there we are. This is the C Sharp Dev Kit extension, or extension pack, really. <laughs> and I'm going to go ahead and hit Install on this. And as that's installing, uh, I do, again, want to highlight the documentation is worth taking a look at. And hopefully, it shouldn't take too long to install from there. OK. So we've got dev kit installed. And if you want to verify that it was installed, then let's clear out the search. And you can actually see all of the extensions that you have installed in VS Code. So as I mentioned before, C Sharp dev kit is actually a series of, of extensions, two of which I already talked about, such as the base C Sharp extension and the IntelliCode for C Sharp dev kit extension. This other one that I didn't mention previously is the .NET runtime install tool. And without this particular extension, you won't be able to run any of your .NET, <laughs> um, .NET projects. So definitely keep this one around. It is a dependency for the C Sharp Dev Kit. And that's not fun, not being able to successfully run your projects after putting in all of that effort. So definitely keep it. <laughs> and from there, we can walk back to the walkthroughs. And in addition to getting a walkthrough for getting started with, with VS Code, a lot of extensions come with their own special walkthroughs that can hold your hand and take you step by step through everything that you need to do to make sure the extension is set up properly. And I'm already getting some notifications related to some setup things that I need to do here, but I'm just going to follow along to follow along with the walkthrough for most of these, just because I think it's easiest. So the first thing I got to do is connect my account to a Visual Studio, Visual Studio subscription, which is free if you're using it for personal, academic, or open, open source related use. And chances are, if you've already used Visual Studio, whether that's the community version, the pro version, or the enterprise version, then you already have this account. So this should be pretty easy to do. Let's go ahead and sign in. All right, so I am now all signed in. There's my account right there. I can hover over the little, um, it's kind of hard to see, but the little dev kit icon at the bottom right corner let me know that the software is licensed under a VS subscription. So the next step that we need to do is set up our environment by installing a .NET SDK, or Software Development Kit. So this kind of goes hand in hand with the .NET Runtime tool. Whereas uh, .NET Runtime is, in, is responsible for making sure that we can successfully run our .NET and C Sharp projects, the .NET SDK is responsible for being able to successfully build the project. <laughs> so we definitely need both if we want to be productive in VS Code with our C Sharp applications. So to do that, we can hit Install .NET SDK. And we're taken to the main browser here. You, again, you have plenty of options as to which SDK to choose from. I like that it gives you suggestions. So I'm going to stick with the .NET 7 version here. But feel free to pick whatever the latest version of .NET is at the time that you're watching this video. Okay, and just like we did with the VS Code user setup, we've got another install wizard that we're going to walk through and set, set up. All right, 
so our install of the .NET SDK was successful. We can now see which product specifically got installed. You can also take a look at corresponding documentation. So if you want to learn even more about how the .NET SDK operates or any release notes and tutorials, then you can check out those resources too. And at this point, something that the walkthrough doesn't always tell you is that uh, once you've installed the .NET SDK, in order for VS Code to successfully recognize it, we're going to need to close out VS Code and open it again. So and we're back. There we go. All right, so back on the C Sharp DevKit walkthrough. We set up our environment with the .NET SDK, but if you want to verify that it was installed successfully, then you can go into the terminal that's at the bottom here, and then write out the command .NET version. And you should see the version number of what you just installed. So if you see that, you did it right. All right, and then from here, we're going into just how to start using the C-sharp dev kit. If you want to trigger a lot of the C-sharp operations, all you really need to do is open up a .cs file at the end of the day. So it's recognizing that you've got some C-sharp going on, and then you should start to be able to use a lot of the C-sharp dev kit functionality. But this is a teaser, really, of what's to come, because I'm not going to talk about it in this episode. But we've got some steps on how to create your first .NET project followed by being able to launch your app, debug it, and test it successfully, as well as an option to go learn more about getting started with C Sharp and .NET. But all of that is spoilers. <laughs> cool, so once you have in finished installing VS Code and C Sharp Dev Kit, did you know you can further customize your editor experience beyond even just the extensions that you have installed? Because you can. So if you go on over to uh, the little settings icon down below and select settings, I'm already here, then you have access to so many different options and ways to further customize your developer environment or in the way that you want it. So there's commonly used features that you can get started with, such as font size, the font family, the good old tabs versus spaces debate, or how big a, tab, um, a particular tab should be, among other different options. As you can see, this is a huge list. <laughs> so if you want to narrow things down, you can always search for what you're looking for. And these settings also apply towards any extensions that you have installed. So you can go check out, in our case, the C Sharp and C Sharp Dev Kit options. And you have so many different things to choose from. You've got things such as being able to show name completion suggestions. You've got inlay hints. This is one of my favorites, actually. If you like to see um, different variable types and their values, or their types displayed in this case, then you can type, you can toggle on inlay hints for a bunch of different scenarios so that you can see those values displayed in the editor directly. So you don't have to hover over the variable in order to see those particular values if you don't want to. So I like all of those. <laughs> so I'm going to select some of those for my own personal needs later. And uh, yeah, you've got a lot of inlay hint options. That would be my biggest recommendation of the ones that aren't currently tracked already. But yeah, you have a lot to choose from if you want to learn more about the different settings options within both C Sharp and C Sharp Dev Kit. You can go on over to the documentation. Another big one that I do recommend checking out is Hot Reload. Uh, this allows you to debug and then edit your code and then debug some more without having to necessarily stop your debugging session, depending on what it is that you went ahead and edited. It's still in its experimental phase, at least at the time of this recording, but still worth giving a try. You'll know that it's toggled on if you see a little uh, fire icon appear when you hit F5 on your code. So lots of different options. Definitely start to explore that, and you can customize to your heart's content. I did mention in the er uh, earlier that you can sync up a lot of these settings. So uh, some of these settings that you choose to toggle on, you can have synced up with your account no matter which VS Code instance that you're using. So this can apply to being in a code space. You can be on your local machine. You can be on another machine. All of those settings will apply once you choose to save them and sync them up. We sh basically just installed VS Code and C Sharp Dev Kit. Didn't take too long. Definitely encourage you to install them if you'd like to follow along with the rest of these videos coming up. It's 
not that hard, <laughs> not much else to it. So tune in next time when we really get started by writing our C Sharp application, by creating our first .NET project and learning how easy it is to manage all of our projects within our C Sharp application. So see you next time.